All right, in this last video, uh, we did a bunch of text styling, and one of the things that you needed to do on your own was to go in and make some additional styles, like say for the block quote, the definition terms. Also, I wanted you to take care of these links down here. Um, and then you also needed to make sure to copy everything out of your um, CSS inspector and then also your inspector style sheet. To make sure I didn't forget anything, I copied my entire style sheet. And then I went ahead and I replaced everything. Okay, and then after that is whenever I came in and I created this comment and uh, then I pasted the stuff that I had done in my inspector style sheet right here. Okay, and, uh, and it's got all this with the block quote and DT. But the other thing too that I had done is that I also had created some new footer anchor link rules so that I changed the color of the footer A tag so that it would be a different color and not that hideous blue and purple. Blue is an unvisited link that is a user agent default style. Um, purple is one that's been visited. Okay, so it's a visited state. So I'm gonna uh, save that and then if I come back over here and refresh the page, then you see this is the new state, okay, for my footer and that underline only shows up whenever I hover over it. And then the other thing too is um, all of my styles are the same, but you'll also notice that I did style my block quote. I made it so that it was in italics, so that's the font style. Um, and then I indented it with a margin. And then I also made my definition terms bold. Okay, so that's all I did. Now the, the thing I wanna look at now is I wanna show you how, if you don't like this where it is, I wanna show you how you can move it up top like this. And I'm also, you'll notice that this blue is a little bit of a more br brilliant bright blue than this. And I'll show you also you know, what I was gonna do to, to fix that. So the thing that we've talked so far about with positioning is, just how these floats work. Um, otherwise, we haven't really talked a whole lot about position. Position is something that um, is, uh, we start to get in a little bit more advanced stuff, but this is just sort of an introduction. Um, the basic position of everything starts off as static. There are four positions. There's static, um, there is uh, relative, there's fixed and there's absolute positioning. I'm not gonna go into all of those. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the fixed position. Now, whenever I changed these to floats, what it did was it, it affected the document flow. And the document flow is if we look at our HTML, let me just expand all of this stuff, okay? If we look at our HTML, we have a natural flow of the document. So you can see that everything is kind of like in a linear format, right? So the linear format says that this uh, section, oh, let me expand that too, the nav. So that this section banner, for instance, comes before this section of content. And then also inside of banner is an article, which comes before the nav, okay? And so forth and so on. And so it wants to naturally uh, show us that in the correct order. And that's exactly what's happening in our document here. So first we've got our banner section and then we have the header and then, then we have this article, uh, excuse me, I guess we have the article, then the header. And then we have separately, we have this nav, which is coming after it. Um, and then after that is the, the content section and so forth. So Whenever you change the document flow, you're sort of pulling something out of the document flow. Um, and a float attempts to do that. It doesn't really change the visual order. What it does is it changes just the behavior um, from something that's a block and it sort of treats it like it's inline, right? Um, but something that's more specific about position um, is that we have static, as I said before, we have relative, fixed and absolute. Those are the main types of positioning in CSS. And so right now this is by default, this nav is set as static um, because it's in the natural document flow. If we want to leave it here inside of the banner section, um, whose role is banner for the ARIA role, so that like screen readers and stuff can find it, it knows, it understands that a banner is something that's supposed to happen at the top of the page. 
if we want to just leave that there, and, and also we want to be able to have people read our H1 first before they see the navigation, then what we can do is visually we can change it on the screen, but we can leave it right here in the HTML. And what that's going to do is it literally sort of visually lifts this nav out of the document flow, and it's going to visually stick it way up here at the top of the page before you know anything else is supposed to load. And when it does that, things like margins and stuff like that sort of, you know, the document doesn't pay any attention to that anymore. And so what I'm going to do, and by the way, if this is a little bit above where you want to be, you could just stop here and be happy with what you've got and turn that in. That's okay. But if you want to sort of move forward and learn a little bit more about this stuff, then just keep on going with me. So what I can do is I can take this nav in my CSS and I can just move it by changing the position a little bit. So let me show you, let's go back to elements and I'm going to go find that nav. Let's actually select it with my inspect element. So I'll right click it and inspect it and I'll find the whole nav. I don't want to just get the list. I want to get the whole nav tag and I can go over here and I can tell it to have a different position by typing the position, oh, starting to misspell it, position property, and then you see it gives me some different options. It gives me absolute, fixed, inherit, initial, relative, static. Forget inherit and initial for right now. Those are, don't worry about those. The four main types are absolute, fixed, relative, and static. Well, absolute and fixed are very similar. I'm not going to explain all of those. That's actually a separate lecture that um, where we've discussed it. It's currently in a static state. So if I scroll through these and I choose fixed, you see what happens. You can see as I scroll through stuff, it starts to do weird things to it on the screen. Absolute moves it in this weird spot and then fixed. I'm going to choose fixed. The difference between absolute and fixed is uh, pretty significant. Actually, I'm going to show you the difference. So let's go to absolute and let's choose absolute on purpose. Okay, and whenever you're using absolute or fixed, like I said before, those yank it out of the document flow. And you'll notice that everything sort of like moved up. You'll also notice when I did absolute, it's scrolling with the page too. That's something that's important. Now, absolute and, and fixed positioning use some properties called top, left, right, bottom. I really only need to tell it to be top, zero, okay, and what did it do? It moved it to the very top, okay, and it's not the same as margins. It's not the same at all. It's literally the, the pixel position, uh, all right, so, and then I'm going to tell it to be left zero. It already is left zero, but I want to be explicit and tell it what to do. Also, now it's no longer doing an automatic 100% width, so I have to be explicit and I have to tell it to be width 100%, okay, and then it goes all the way across, and the other thing, too, that you can give something that is fixed or absolute, actually, or relative, is a z-index. I don't technically have to do that right now because it's the only thing on the page that's pulled out of the document flow, but a z-index is like a stacking order, sort of like in Photoshop where you have layers on top of layers. And this way, we can tell it to be on the top. And so uh, a safe set of z-indexes is like 999. So anyway, I, I'm just going to do like 99 right? Because right now everything else is lower than that. And then that way it'll always be on top of other things. Okay, so that's that's absolute. And so now that's in, in its spot, in an absolute spot. Watch what happens when I scroll. It scrolls off the page. So it's absolute, but it disappears off the page. The difference between absolute and fixed, this is one of the differences, okay? But this is right now the difference that makes a difference to us. If I change it to fixed, now it fixes itself there and everything scrolls underneath it. And that's ideal for a navigation bar that you always want to be present no matter where you are on the page, which is kind of handy, right? And that's actually very simple to change, right? Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that it's not taking into account any margins or anything else that's around it. So that padding that we had put at the top of this banner is now being covered up. So what we need to think about is going and changing that banner. Let's find our section banner. And at the top, remember, I had added some padding. So padding top, 1.5%. Well, 
I don't really want to choose percentage now because the text is not set in percentage. The text is set in M's and it's always going to be in M's. And so to be reliable, I don't want to worry about the it matching a percentage of the, the size on the page, you know, in terms of how the viewport is because the viewport C is going to change. All right. Um, so what I can do instead is I can tell it to be a certain number of M's. And if I want to look at this, let's try 2M and C. And it's still not quite enough. So maybe 3 will do the trick. Because you have to also think about the fact that this is taking up a certain amount of space, plus it has padding. And then on top of it, we want a little extra space visually right there. Okay. And so that might be adequate for us. Okay. Something else that might be kind of nice now that things are scrolling underneath this, um, a couple things. One is that it might be nice, instead of having this be um, solid, it might be nice if we're using an alpha transparency that has RGBA value. So in doing that, let's, uh, let's go ahead and check out the color of that nav. You see right here, it's this dark blue. If I jump back over here to my palette, maybe I want it to be a more brilliant blue. Um, something like this, but I'm going to grab the RGB values and I might have to adjust them because that might be a little bit too light colored. We'll see. Um, so let's go and change the background here to RGBA. And I'm just going to paste that in and I'm going to make some changes where I change the dashes to commas. And then I need to add the alpha transparency at the end, which is let's take a peek at it and say that it's point. Let's, first of all, let's just look at it at 100%. That looks like it might be a little bit um, bright. Well, and the other thing too is that we said that we wanted it to have an alpha transparency. So um, let's do 0.8 so that it's not quite so bright and that we can see through it. Okay, and then right now it looks a little purpley. So what I could do is I could drop the, the red level down. Let's go ahead and hit that at zero, that's starting to look a little bit better. And then, uh, you know, this this value, maybe the green value, it could be dropped a little. Let's try, I don't know, somewhere around 70. And I think that that kind of works pretty well with the blues that are in this picture. And, and I think I'm fine with that. And so we've now got this new color. And the other thing too that I might want to do, you see how it looks whenever you scroll you can see sort of through it, but you can still see and hover over here and get your hover states. Now, the other thing that I could do is to have it match with these borders and drop shadows is that I can go and find the border and drop shadow. So let's inspect the banner. Let's find the banner. Let's pull this up. And here's the banner and let's just grab some information off of it. So we'll, we'll use the box shadow and we'll also use the border bottom copy so anyway i'm going to go find my nav in here which is right there and i can add those uh the styles and i you know i don't know if i like the the proximity anymore now that there's a, a shadow and here right i can jump back to my banner and i can increase my padding at the top and do like maybe 3.5 m and that's a little bit better. Okay. And so now I've kind of got a consistent look and feel and that seems to work. Okay. And then if you felt like you needed more space down here, you could add padding to the aside, or since we're already in the bat in the banner, I could also go ahead and change this padding so that it's no longer padding top, but just padding. And then I can do, a rule where I change it so that it's top and bottom, maybe 3.5, and then I'll do left and right <clears throat> at zero. And the bottom, that's way too much padding. So it looks like I actually need to do top at 3.5, right at zero, bottom maybe at, I don't know, 0.5M or something like that, and then zero for the left. And that looks a lot better. And from this point forward, um, you know, you can go in and if you want to make your other heading levels uh, have text shadows to match this, you know, that's fine. You need to style this so that it becomes your own and it doesn't look like this anymore. 
okay? I mean, it can have some of the same basic layout stuff, but make it your own, okay?